So welcome to today's another peak webinar with myself, Chris Reed, and our special guest, Mark Sainsbury, European Sales Director of Prismo Systems. As always, these webinars are informal discussions around new technology and another peak series of playbooks. Uh, recent webinars that you've seen have focused on the edge, um, the realization that in certain situations, the public cloud simply won't scale to meet the demand and, and that a hybrid approach of edge plus cloud is required. So with this in mind, today we move further along the Another Peak playbook chain and address a real client concern, namely risk assessment. And how you evaluate risk across the whole edge cloud estate. Now, consider a relationship between data security vendors and organizations. It's, it's like me and my bank. The, 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 there's a level of trust here, um, and there's the fear of, of changing. So we had a client um, who didn't want to change, but was all too well aware that in the current security, with these current security situations, uh, there may be missing elements, there may be blind spots, um, letting things fall through the cracks as, as, as people um, describe. So our approach was therefore to gain an estate-wide view, um, something that we classed as active risk assessment, that is effectively augmenting the existing systems. In essence, an overlay. And, and this is where we, we found Prismo, uh, Prismo Systems and is the driver for today's presentation. So on that note, I'll, I'll hand you over to, to Mark and he'll tell you a bit more about Prismo Systems. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Sainsbury. I'm the Regional Director from MIA for Prisma Systems. Um, I'm going to start off telling you a little bit about the company and a little bit about the work we've been doing over the last few years and uh, the platform we've built. And then we'll focus particularly today on, on looking at the active cyber risk management features of the platform. So without further ado, let's move on to the first slide. Um, quick overview of Prismo Systems. I mean, on the face of it, you, looking at us, you, you think we were, you know, a typical Silicon Valley startup, and uh, you know, headquartered in Santa Clara. We're we're backed by uh, Sequoia Capital, very well known venture capitalist. But actually, what's different about Prismo is that you know, actually, the company's been around for some time, and and rather than uh, launching the company in a, in a splash of sort of marketing and PR, you know, the founders have, have been working away diligently in the background and, and for over four years before our product was even brought to market. Um, and that's because we were trying to solve some really difficult problems. And, and hopefully, as you'll see when we go through the uh, presentation, the problems we're trying to solve aren't trivial, but the outcomes um, are incredibly valuable. Well, we certainly think so anyway. Hopefully, you'll agree. Um, the founders of the company, both Anjan Venkatramani and Shiwe Chow, both um, long-serving distinguished engineers at, at at uh, places like Juniper Networks and um, before that NetScream. So they've been around for an awful long time. They put together a fantastic group of engineers that uh, have really done some, some fantastic work in, in bringing what is a you know, very innovative platform to market. So the question we often get asked is, you know, what, what is the problem that, that we are trying to solve? What, what is, what, it, on the face of it, it's quite simple. I mean, despite spending you know, billions of dollars um, on uh, information technology, the high profile breaches continue to happen. Um, and they're happening, you know, if not daily, certainly weekly. Um, and whether it's organization having their data exfiltrated for, for resale or, or for, um, for use in, uh, you know, social engineering tax or just straightforward extortion by a ransomware, you know, the, the threat actors are, you know, seem to be gaining the upper hand and seem to have almost free, free reign to generate revenues at, at will. Um, and actually, you know, as a recent survey, um, as, as you can see on the slide, um, when, when talking to security leaders, you know, found that you know, despite having a whole plethora of products, spending millions of dollars, you know, a large percentage of them really didn't even know if those products were working in the way they should. Um, so this is, there's this, I think, perception in the market that we've spent an awful lot of time, effort, and money building in, InfoSec infrastructure, um, and we're not actually getting a good return on that investment. And that's where Prismo, um, Prismo came in. So we started by coming up with the concept of a, of a transaction. Um, 
And a transaction really is a, an end-to-end -end, um, relationship between uh, the users as the source and, and resources. And those resources can be, can be cloud-based, they can be both private cloud or public cloud. Um, and what we found was that 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 end-to-end that -end transaction was often very difficult, if not impossible, to actually define. Um, and subsequently, decision making was um, was difficult um, and often resulted in large uh, volumes of false positives. So Prismo uh, initially set out to to solve that problem by being able to uh, first identify. Um, and then record and rebuild the end-to-end -end transaction in full context between the user uh, community and, and the resources they're accessing. Now, what we found was that if you look at the way a traditional information security technology stack is built, it very often consists of discrete um, individual products. And I think you know a lot of us have, have grown up in information security where we've you know, we've been taught to um, to install defense in depth or best of breed or best of um, uh, best in class technologies. And, and the whole industry seems to be besotted with this um, this idea that, that a, a, a product can only do a single thing or a single function. And even though there are multifunctional products out there, they very rarely they, are they fully integrated. So what we found was that you know, this was leading to um, the, the creation of what we call blind spots because individual technologies, whilst performing um, adequately in their own right, have no concept or context of anything outside of their particular realm. And subsequently, you have these gaps um, caused by things like excess privileges, simple misconfigurations, um, and human error. And those blind spots are exploited by threat actors. Um, what we found was it's incredibly difficult for CISOs or security operations staff to identify where those blind spots were and, and plug the gaps. So that's what um, Prismo has set out to do. When we look at where these um, breaches and where the, the risks are, it, we also get an interesting breakdown in that actually the majority of, of the uh, breaches come from what we call inherent risk uh, parameters. So these are um, hygiene factors. They are, they are aspects of doing business that we know is, has a risk associated to it. And we know that threat actors will try and um, uh, uh, um, leverage those uh, risks to, to gain access and to, to steal information. Um, 20% of, um, of the breaches fall back to what we call imminent risk. So these are, these are external factors that are largely outside of your control. So for example, a new piece of malware or a particular um, Trojan, for example. So you still have to react to that. But actually, if you can get the inherent risk under control, then the, 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 the actual, the, your actual exposure to a, a major breach is, is, is greatly reduced. Okay. So what... Prismo have done is build a platform that enables us to run a, what we call a risk control plane end to end across the enterprise. So rather than having to look at individual pieces of information, we get a single view of the truth from end to end. Which user um, using which device, where they are, has access which resource and what they've done in real time across the enterprise. So we we record every, so we know exactly there and we record every action. What we can then do is then combine that to what we call the configuration state and see where the see where the blind spots are. Now, to do this, we built a, a platform which um, is um, structured in a way that allows you to to broadly follow the the NIST compliance framework. In that, there is a a section on um, on discovering identi identity, um, which we call the assess phase. We then have a control phase where we can. Um, minimize the, the, the risks that we've identified in, in, in the assess phase. And we have a contain, which is where we do our proactive threat hunting and, um, uh, and uh, testing of applications. And then finally, we have an assure where we can look at the, um, the, uh, the alignment with uh, your chosen um, compliance framework, such as, as, as the NIST framework, which is the one we've, we've started with. 
So I think the question that we often get asked is, okay, well, how are you doing this? What, what, are, you, what are you doing that, that's different? And I think it's important to understand from an a architectural point of view where we started with Prisma, because again, it was a slightly unconventional. The product architecture itself is based on um, what we call the transaction graph data lake, which is a, a federated distributed data lake. And for those of you not familiar with storage technology, a data lake differs from a, from a data warehouse or, or, a, or a simple database. And it has a, has a number of attributes which are, which are, are very useful um, when doing analytics of, of high volumes of data. First of all, um, it, it can scale virtually to unlimited uh, size. So you can start very small and, and grow um, and expand the product um, virtually um, uh, unrestricted. Um, it also gives you the ability to, to store both structured and unstructured data in its raw format without having to decide necessarily what its purpose is for. So it gives you a very, very clear vanilla starting point and allows you then to use that data for multiple use cases. Um, and so what, what Prisma has done is essentially built designed its own uh, distributed federated data lake, which consists of a number of, uh, of, uh, of inputs. First of all, we collect existing information um, that's already on the network. So for example, we ingest logs from your authentication system. We take NetFlow information in to identify the network structure. So that allows us, those two allows us to identify who's on the network and what's on the network. We then um, have developed our own set of sensors and enforcers. Now these allow us to instrument um, both uh, host information based in either private or public cloud, um, in either Linux or Windows um, or virtual uh, environments, and also in applications as well. So what it allows us to do is to augment the traditional um, information that you would get, say from a, from a, um, a security device or from a SIM tool and actually augment it with information that we are generating ourselves from your host and your application environments, which typically give you very poor information, mainly because they, have, they very often have no context of the network or of the identity of an individual other than an IP address or a port number. Okay, so what we do is we enrich that information so that we, are, we know when a, an entry goes from a, a, a server into a, an app web application then into a database, that database record is associated with, a, with either another application or an actual individual. Okay. Typically, if you look at the logs on, uh, on, a, on an application or on a, on a, a database, it will tell you that somebody logged in with shared credential dev and ran the following file or logged in as admin and did the following and instigated the following process. It doesn't actually tell you very much about actually what's behind or what the full context of the transaction is. Finally, we augment um, the, uh, the database with, with other contextual data, either from, from other uh, security vendors. So if you've got existing vendors running uh, firewall, CASB technology or uh, EDI technology, we can ingest information by anything that gives us additional context about that transaction. And we also take in things like CVE information um, and also information from things like Active Directory. That allows us to build this this, this transactional graph data lake in real time, on top of which we, we are then able to, to build our use cases, which in this case, um, today we're talking about is, is active risk management. There are other use cases, obviously, because the data lake is by definition open, it's vanilla, um, but we're using the data to provide our clients with visibility of the transactions for information security purposes. And I say in this case, we're gonna be talking a little bit about um, um, the way we do our active uh, cyber risk management. Excellent. Uh, I mean, certainly, Mark, I think one of the things that struck us when we first looked at this was this concept that, okay, as you said, today we're looking at the risk assessment piece, but because you have that up, that view, that overall view of everything, you can start to look into things, you know, we were thinking of stuff around like, you know, application or web server protection. We, we areas like, you know, we, we had people talking probably about three years ago about how we better identify root admin breaches 
And, you know, there's this 20, 25 minute window during which a hacker with root admin privileges can make himself invisible. And and we we never got to a stage where we had a tool that could do that in in real time, stroke near real time. And now we have. Yeah, I mean, it's back to the old adage, really. You can't protect and prevent what you can't see. Mm -hmm. And so the basis of everything we do at Prismo is around visi- really around visibility. That's where we start. We, we need to understand and record everything that happens. Right. Otherwise, you end up taking a snapshot of a, of a particular transaction or a particular user session. And it's a bit like um, you know, uh, driving past a speed camera. If you know where the speed camera is, then you slow down. But once you get around the corner out of range, the speed camera has no idea how you're driving the cruise. And that's typically what happens with a lot of information security products. We've been used to having these kind of sort of, you know, people use the term bumping in the wire. Um, yeah. at, predominantly, even, even in a virtual environment today, most information security products are still appliances. They're still gateways that the traffic has to be routed to or copied, sent to. Um, yeah. Whereas the approach we've taken is that we are embedded within the application, within the host. We're, a, we're a, 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 a function of that environment ourselves. So there's no way of bypassing us. And also the contextual information we give has, is, is real and it can't be um, argued with. It's coming straight from the horse's mouth, if you like, the, i.e. the application itself or the host or the database. And then we're putting it with the contextual information of all the other bits that we put in together so that you get this you know, single version of the truth rather than having multiple versions of the truth and trying to stitch it together with correlation, which is how traditional SIM tools work, you know, using spatial temporal correlation, which which we know is flawed because, you know, when you've got tens of thousands of users logging on at the same time um, and, and, and transactions happening in sub-millisecond, it's very difficult to identify exactly which user um, action exactly. or um, was responsible for which particular process or, or database entry. So once again, thanks very much for your time, Mark, and um, we'll hopefully see you soon. Thanks, Chris. Good to see you. Take care.